In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, I bear witness there is no God but God, and God is the only one who has the right to be worshipped. I also bear witness that Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them, are the messengers of God. And I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected Satan. So greetings of peace and thanks for tuning in. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with you. In this video, we're going to be discussing the trials and tribulations and calamities before the coming of Imam Mehdi, as well as the second coming of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, known as the Mashiachs, Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef in the Jewish tradition. So, uh, many of you may know that there are many scholars back in the day in history uh, that knew of the coming of Imam Mehdi, as well as the second coming of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, um, that they didn't want to live in this time period of Imam Mehdi and well, the second coming of Jesus because a peace and blessings be upon him because they knew that there'd be so much trials and tribulations and tests in the world at that time that would shake their faith to the core. We are, I believe, are living in those times now with the calamities occurring worldwide like pandemics, major flooding, wildfires, riots, major unrest, and more. Noticeably more stronger every year that goes by. I believe in Mehmedi is among us as I have stated before in previous videos with evidence like the Schumann residence rising um, as there's a hadith that I've mentioned many times before in my videos that uh, in the advent of the coming of in Mehmedi that the earth will fill uh, with a celestial illumination of its Lord which can be measured uh, the frequency and the vibration of the earth uh, can be measured in the Schumann Residence. So the corporations of America and China are being hit the hardest as they have been the most oppressive to the Muslims and Christians and Jews. Um, so they've been punished severely by the punishments of Allah. They are run by the Rothschild Zionist banking elites. Uh, they run the world by oppression, uh, by satanic, satanic means of lying, killing and stealing from us. They print paper dollars and digital dollars that have zero value to control and enslave the masses through a usury debt interest system with worthless paper. So the world uh, worships, the majority of the world, uh, it seems to me, that worships the almighty dollar. Um, the, the governments, the corporations of the world, all they care mostly about is the uh, bottom line, which is profits. Uh, we live in fascist times where the governments and the corporation governments are in bed with the corporations uh, which is a definition of fascism so all their legislation and policies all revolve around the almighty dollar uh, making uh, phony monopolies and uh, unjust legislations to further rob the people and enslave them so how do we how do we fix that how how do we fix that so we have to do this by applying divine laws and the commandments of the most high god um, that is going back to the real money god's money gold and silver coins the real currency and abolishing the usury interest is the key and answer to the banking zionist monopoly this is where the tire this is where the tires hit the road we have to take allah's laws and commandments seriously and establish them thoroughly throughout the world for the oppression, the corruption, the injustices, and the calamities will continue unless we take the path of God, Allah, the unique creator of all that exists, and transform this world into a paradise. So the oppression and calamities will increase in both quantity and strength until the believers realize that there is no other way except by Imam Mehdi as well as the second coming of Jesus peace and blessings be upon him the Mashiachs implementing Allah's divine laws and commandments on the earth so this is the, cru the, uh, the crux of uh, this video so the oppression and the calamities will increase both in quantity and strength until the believers realize that there is no way out except by Imam Mehdi and Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, implementing Allah's divine laws and commandments on the earth. So I've got a hadith here that illustrates that. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. In the end time, my Ummah will undergo very hard afflictions like never before, so that man cannot find a way out. Okay, there's going to be so much afflictions on the earth that a man can't find his way out. So the believers 
are going to have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations because uh, either they're stubborn, they uh, don't take God's laws and commandments seriously. Then along will appear a person from my progeny, that is my albate, that's my family, who will fill the earth with justice as it was filled with injustice. The inhabitants of the earth and the inhabitants of the heavens love him. The sky will bring down its water everywhere and the earth will bring all what it can offer and will become green all over. So, uh, very important. Uh, hadith uh, to realize that there's going to be a great deal of trials and tribulations before the coming of Imam Mehdi. Uh, Ali said here in another hadith, uh, the Mehdi will not come until one third die, one third are killed, and one third remain. So, uh, so two thirds, uh, according to Ali, uh, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, the two thirds of the world will die by calamities, uh, famines, trials and tribulations, wars, uh, etc. So when will Imam Mehdi uh, be sworn allegiance to and be an open ruler? So the Prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him, disagreements will occur at the death of a caliph and a man of the people of Medina will come flying forth to Mecca. Some of the people of Mecca will come to him, bring him out against his will, and swear allegiance to him between the corner and the Makam at the Kaaba. And so once he's sworn allegiance to, uh, an expeditionary force then will be sent from him, will be sent against him from Syria, but will be swallowed up in the desert between Mecca and Medina. Then the people will see that the eminent saints of Syria and the best people of Iraq will come to him and swear allegiance to him between the corner and the Makam. So it won't come until there's a great deal of trials and tribulations that will occur, um, that people will find no other way out throughout these severe trials and tribulations, that they will have to submit to God's will um, and realize the true leader of uh, of the Ummah, which is in Mehmedi, the Mashiach, and swear allegiance to him, where an army will be sent, an expeditionary army will be sent against him from Syria, but that expeditionary army will be swallowed up in the desert between Mecca and Medina. And when the when the believers see that, many of the believers from the surrounding areas uh, from Syria and Iraq predominantly will come and swear allegiance to him. So in Revelation 19, also I believe discusses Imam Mehdi as well, uh, it also illustrates uh, uh, the calamities to come uh, prior to Imam Mehdi. So it says here uh, in Revelation 19, 11 through 16, I believe, the heavenly warrior defeats the beast. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this important uh, line here, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. So before Imam Mehdi's coming, peace and blessings be upon him, as well as the second coming of Jesus, the Mashiachs, um, that the wrath of God Almighty is going to be, the fury of the wrath of God will be felt severely on this earth before they come to realize that there is no other way out except through Imam Mehdi as well as the second coming of Jesus and implementing Allah's divine laws and commandments. So this is prophesied to happen, this is going to happen, there's no way that we can stop it. So Allah says in the Quran, he's made trade lawful and has made interest unlawful. So Allah says in chapter 2, verse 275, those who practice usury and interest, their condition is such as they will not be able to stand except like the standing of one who has lost his reason under the influence of Satan. 
That is so because he says trade is just like usury and interest, whereas Allah has made trade lawful and made interest unlawful. Then whosoever has received his admonition from his Lord and keeps away from usury and interest shall not be punished for the past. His matter rests with Allah. As for those who revert to the practice of usury and interest, it is these who are the fellows of the fire, therein shall they live for long. Allah says in chapter 2, verse 279, If you do not return the gains of the usury and interest, then beware of war from Allah and His Messenger. But if you turn away, then you shall have your principal back without interest, thus you shall neither deal unjustly nor be dealt with unjustly. So uh, the Rothschild banking Zionist elites have been very unjust, uh, imposing their uh, fiat usury interest-based slavery system upon the people. Allah says here, uh, if they do not forego these uh, transactions, then beware of war from Allah. We can see the war uh, upon the people, um, and Allah uses the shaitans and other means of trials and tribulations and calamities uh, to afflict uh, trials and tribulations upon the people so they will turn back to God and God's laws. So what's the remedy? Allah says in chapter 30 verse 39, and that which you lay out as interest and usury with the view to increase the wealth of the people does not help increase in the sight of Allah. But that which you present as a cap, purifying dues with a view to seek whereby the pleasure of Allah, it is they who will increase their wealth many times over. So uh, Allah saying here basically that if you use uh, the usury uh, interest-based debt system, um, you will not gain wealth. You're going to lose wealth. The people will lose wealth. You can see that that you know uh, only a small few, a handful of people control most of all the wealth in the world. Um, so it just makes the richer richer and the poorer poorer and the system is slowly but surely coming uh, to an end. So Allah says, but that which you present as zakat, purifying dues, that's like helping the needy people, uh, helping uh, in the ways of the cause of Allah, freeing people from debt, freeing people from slavery, uh, helping the traveler who travels long distances, etc. People who are in need, uh, this will increase the wealth of the people uh, as well as uh, states and countries so as we've seen uh, with the uh, with the shutdowns and everything like that that some countries gave out uh, charity to their people because of the shutdowns and this charity will uh, help manifest um, because it was given to needy people that it will help the economy uh, of those countries but those countries that are hoarding their wealth, who are robbing and stealing further uh, through this system um, will eventually lose their wealth, uh, will eventually come to an end and uh, will be punished severely in the hellfire. So if we want to cure that, uh, we must give charity to the needy people. So giving charity in the cause of Allah multiplies wealth. So Allah says in chapter 57 verse 11, who is he that will separate a handsome portion of his possessions to give in the cause of Allah? Let him remember he will increase it manifold to repay to him many times over. Indeed, there awaits such a one a generous and honorable reward. So Allah is making a promise that if you do give in the cause of Allah, uh, in zakat, purifying dues, that wealth will be multiplied and manifested back to you. Uh, in a general generous and honorable way so Allah says in chapter 8 verse 73 and as for those who disbelieve they are friends of one another hence if you O Muslims do not act as been ordained for you to help one another there will be persecution and great corruption in the land so um, if we don't turn and help each other the believers the Muslims uh, Christians and Jews the authentic ones um, the true believers out there that if we do not help each other, that we can expect more corruption, more persecution uh, against us. So we need to come together, unite, and that will ultimately happy, happen in the swearing of allegiance to Imam Mehdi. Uh, peace and blessings be upon him, as well as the second coming of Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon him as well. That uh, 
the paradise on earth will occur in that time, but uh, unfortunately it's going to take a lot of trials and tribulations and a lot of tests and a lot of punishments from God Almighty um, for that to occur, as uh, it says in Revelation 19, that he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. So as we can see, lots of punishments uh, in the United States, a lot of flooding with the two hurricanes that just recently hit, uh, Hurricane Sally and Hurricane Laura, the wildfires that have destroyed millions of uh, acres of land um, and uh, destroyed over 60,000 homes in the United States and billions of dollars of infrastructure lost uh, with these hurricanes as uh, in China, you know, there's all sorts of flooding there, all sorts of billions of dollars of damages, um, locusts, uh, the crops being destroyed, uh, all sorts of calamities are happening upon them because uh, they are persecuting the believers. Um, anybody who per persecutes me, as the as they should know from some of the people that have tried to persecute me, punishment has has fallen upon them. Um, and we can see this further in the world as well that what Allah says is true it's it's eternal laws of Allah God doesn't change his laws um, he just uh, improves them uh, or the like thereof in, in uh, previous uh, revelations as God changes his uh, uh, he just changes the course of his laws but all his laws are basically following the same course of faith um, it has changed from the Torah as well as the Gospels of Jesus and now the Quran, but they're all on the same course of faith. They're all very similar. Um, just Allah has perfected it through as the evolution of human beings, souls uh, in this world. Uh, so Allah has uh, perfected his final revelation to mankind, which is the Quran. So uh, very important for us to know and understand why all these punishments are occurring on this earth. It's not because of global warming or because of this, that, and the other thing. Is that there are oppressive forces out there um, that are oppressing the believers and uh, of all walks of faith and people in general. That uh, there will be severe consequences for doing so. And they use the, uh, the Zionist banking uh, elite, use usury and interest, lies and cheats and manipulations. They're not very creative people, but uh, they're good at mimicking and uh, using deception. Uh, uh, they take parts of what I say in my video and in your videos and other people's videos um, and they use it for their own propaganda and they twist and. and and, and stuff like that. Just like how the Zionists pretend that they're, they're the real Semitic Jews. The real Semitic Jews were a brownish people that lived in North Africa, North uh, East Africa. So, uh, and then the Jews that are predominantly uh, in Israel are European Jews. So they're not really Semitic, but they, like I said, they just lie and manipulate the whole thing. Uh, the whole Zionist movement is a complete lie, deception, and a control mechanism to try to rule the world. Uh, but it's not going to happen, inshallah. God has promised uh, victory for us, and we just need to stay patient and steadfast in the cause of Allah. And realizing that the implementation of divine laws and commandments are really the forefront. Is That's why I'm in the process and pretty close to being complete. Uh, making the book of the organization divine laws of the most high god um so it's going to organize all the divine laws in the and so it's easy to access uh it's well organized uh easy to find easy to understand um it's not going to have my interpretation it's just organizing them categorizing them um to make it easier to learn to accelerate uh, spiritual growth etc so if you want to help me in that in the cause of allah There'll be some options for donations uh, in the description box below, as well as the uh, hadiths, uh, Quran verses, and uh, the Revelation 19 from the Bible. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take Allah as your shield. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be with you. Thank you. Peace.